There's lots of applications for a scatter chart at the most basic level. You might want to compare a fund versus its sector. So on the left hand side, select instruments, select the universe you're after. Management groups will load up. We're looking for Bell or Gifford. So scroll down, select the provider. All of their funds will load up underneath. I'm after the American fund. And there's a bit of a shortcut as opposed to just adding the fund in on its own. You can click on the shortcut button to the side of it, click on add fund and sector, and both the fund and the sector appear underneath. What do I want to do with the data? I want to throw that into a scatter chart. So select charts, select scatter chart, ultimately select a performance period, say five years, click on generate, and you'll get a nice scatter chart showing you the performance versus risk of the fund versus its sector. In this case, the fund is taking a hell of a lot more risk than the sector average, but it's also getting a decent level of return. So coming back to the main screen, you might also want to run this on a family of solutions. This could be a family of different risk targeted multi asset funds like Vanguard Life Strategy, but it could also be a range of model portfolios. Maybe it's the FE model portfolios, Vestra, Thesis, etc. Or maybe even an in-house range of models. And you want to simply illustrate the performance of risk of these instruments against one another. So in this case, if I click on portfolios, I've got my own in-house model portfolios. So I'll open up my portfolio tab. I can click on multiple selection makes my life slightly easier. I can go down to my model portfolios, which are here, and hold down control or shift, and it can select more than one, click on add, they'll all appear. Again, a bit of a tip, I can change the colors of this. So if I'm looking at, again, a family of investments that take different levels of risk, I can make them all the same color, and I can throw those into a five-year scatter chart, and it should neatly be able to show me, again, the performance versus risk of each one of these solutions side by side, and hopefully show me that nice efficient frontier curve as over the last five years the more risk you would have taken the better the level of the performance. What about throwing someone else's portfolio into the scatter chart to show them against your solutions where they sit on that risk and return matrix? So in this case I've selected Carol Nicholson and her Aviva pension. I'm going to throw her into the scatter chart as well or her portfolio and it will neatly be able to show me out of my one to five risk profiles um, where she sits on that scale. And in this case, she's taking less performance than my model portfolio for, uh, but equal to the level of volatility. Now, maybe she's just filled in a risk profile and she's come out as adventurous. So irrespective of this, she should be somewhere up here or in reverse. Maybe she's just filled in a risk profile and she's she and the computer have both told us that she's defensive. Therefore, she should be taking this level of risk down here. Yes, not getting a, a good level of performance when the markets are strong, but equally not losing as much when they fall. Something we get asked about all the time of what these two tick boxes are on the right hand side of most instruments you select, whether it's a sector, whether it's a portfolio. Ultimately, it means do you want to look at the overall portfolio in that scatter chart, i.e. just one blue dot, or do you want to look at every single fund within the portfolio? And therefore, I can select both of them and click on generate. And when we're looking at a scatter chart, it will show me where the overall portfolio sits. Again, there's that one blue dot here but it also shows me where all of my underlying holdings sit and therefore the mix of funds that are taking high levels of risk for good levels of performance and those that are not taking a lot of risk and therefore not getting good levels of return. As you can see now, the same applies to sectors. Coming back to our initial example, when we're trying to look at the entire North American sector, I had the opportunity of telling the system whether I wanted to look at the sector average as one dot or whether I wanted to look at every single fund within that sector average. Now the problem you'll find is if I want to look at every single fund in the sector and the sector average on a static scatter chart and click on generate, a static scatter chart has a limitation. So it can only look at roughly around 12 instruments or holdings at any given time. So therefore you're not going to get every single fund within that sector as you requested. And therefore there lies the difference between a static and an interactive scatter chart. On the right hand side, if you're ever looking at a lot of data, whether that's a very big portfolio, or in this case, a particularly large sector, under chart type, you can change that to interactive. Again, pick out the particular performance period and click on generate. It takes a bit longer to load because there's obviously a lot more data to look at, but ultimately what you'll get is a nice big scatter chart showing you every single fund within that sector. And again, the performance of risk of each one, but ultimately also, where the sector average sits. So as the name implies, an interactive scatter chart is actually quite interactive. The chart image is dynamic. So if you hover over any one of these dots, for example, it will tell you at the very bottom what fund it is. It's the fund we were looking at earlier, the Bell or Gifford. American fund is taken on a very high level of volatility, but equally a very good level of performance. You'll see the little red triangle in the middle there. That's the sector average. 
And if you're struggling to find a particular fund, if you scroll down to the table underneath, it lists all of them for me. So I can go and select the Fidelity American Fund, and it'll then quickly highlight on the chart which fund that is. Lastly, you can zoom in as well. So if I hold down the left mouse button, I can zoom into that cluster in the top left hand corner, let go, let me zoom into those, and you'll see underneath the table again dynamically rescales. It only shows me the funds now on my chart, and I can flip and flick those funds back to my main screen, the ones that I want to run further analysis on, and they'll be waiting for me back in my active list. So finally for scatter charts, a little feature unknown to many is actually built into a table and it allows you to decide upon the axis of a scatter chart. So I've created a table here on every single fund within the American sector. I've got my columns at the top, performance, volatility, fund size, yield, etc. and my 92 American funds on the left. Now if you scroll right the way down to the bottom of the table, there's a very small tab down here, scatter chart options. If you expand it, all of the headers of your table are simply duplicated in these drop down boxes. So I can select one axis, five year performance versus maybe the charge, the OCF of the fund. And if you click on scatter chart, it will load up something a bit like this, which in this particular case shows me the performance along the bottom and the charge along the left. And if you look closely, it's essentially showing me that the funds at the very top here are taking the same level of performance as the ones at the bottom, but ultimately charging far more. So these ones I'd be better off looking at because they're far cheaper and able to achieve exactly the same level of return. So I hope you found that little tutorial useful. As ever, any questions you can click chat with an expert in the bottom right hand corner. That will set up our live chat with the help desk. If you actually want to speak to someone on the left hand side under contact us, you'll get the phone number and email address for our help desk open from 8 till 6 every day.